So I was doing a little research and it turns out not many people in the UK are using their ISA to its full advantage. And most people just stick their money in a cash ISA as shown on this large turquoise color here on the graph. Only about one in five ISA accounts opened are actually stocks and shares, which is one of my favorite types of ISAs. It is pretty easy to get 7% or more on average every year on your savings. Now I've been lucky somewhat in some years and I've been able to get more than 30 to 40% returns just in my stocks and shares ISA. And I want to share with you why it's such a good thing that you should consider. So in this video, I want to explore what platforms are, what the funds are that you can choose and how this whole stocks and shares thing actually works to give you a bit of confidence to get started. There are effectively four types of ISAs that you can actually open. In a nutshell, you can invest up to £20,000 a year into an adult ISA and all of the interest that you make within that is completely tax-free when you withdraw it. Firstly, a cash ISA is a simple cash account which is usually split into easy access or a fixed account where you lock away the funds for a few years. At the time of filming, with the Bank of England rate quite high, this is actually pretty good for savings and you can put your money into an easy access ISA and get about 3% interest. Before everything went up in price, that was actually quite low at less than 1% and was never really an attractive option. Versus the second option, a fixed cash ISA where you lock away for one to three years, where at the moment rates are actually above 4% at the moment, which is really good. The second type is a stocks and shares ISA, which is my favorite, where you can invest your money into stocks of companies and watch them go up or watch them go down in value. Or for the more average investor like me and you, we can put our money in what is known as an index fund. For example, the FTSE 100, which is the top 100 UK companies, or the S&P 500, which is the top 500 US companies. So you effectively spread your money across hundreds of companies and diversify your portfolio, which is a pretty hands-off approach. And the S&P 500 has historically over the past 70 years achieved an average annualized return of 7% a year. Some years have been more, some have been less, but on average, it settles out to be about 7%. The third type is an innovative finance ISA. This is for investing your money into fintechs, for example, peer-to-peer -peer lending, where you loan your money out to companies and then they pay you back monthly and you get a fixed rate of return. But these are really high risk and several platforms have collapsed in recent years and the regulators have started saying that these can only be marketed to sophisticated investors and high net worth investors. So I'm not going to cover these as an option in this video. And lastly is a lifetime ISA, also known as a LISA. You can use it to save up to £4,000 a year towards either a first home costing up to £450,000 pounds, which isn't much these days, or for retirement, and Rishi adds a bonus of up to £1,000 a year on top. Unfortunately, not out of his own pocket, that comes from the government. If you withdraw the money for anything but a house or retirement, then you have to pay a penalty. So an introduction to index funds. So let's dive into stocks and shares ISAs. Typically, if done right, they're low risk and it's great for beginner investors just to dip their toes. Now, rather than having to be some kind of financial expert analyzing stocks and charts all day, this is really passive armchair investing. And I only really invest into index funds, which are basically these big pots of money which are spread across hundreds of companies, meaning you're not concentrating yourself or risking your money onto a single stock. So if a company performed badly, you don't go down with them. Instead, you're spread out across many companies. Some will go up, some will go down, but by investing in, for example, the S&P 500, which is my favorite, that is the top 500 companies in the US. And when you're spreading your money across Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, PepsiCo, the Bank of America, these are huge, well-known profit-generating companies that have been around for a long time. So you're not gambling on these unknown startups, so the risk is somewhat lower. Of course, when you invest your money, the value can go up and down. Just look at what happened during COVID. But the idea is that in the long run, your fund should go up over time. And Warren Buffett, one of the world's wealthiest investors, even himself, said his easy advice is to just invest passively 
into the S&P 500 where you can quite literally set it and forget it. It's easy, you don't need to manage it, your money is spread across multiple companies and sectors as well. And it's the golden nugget of investing, the golden rule, where you should spread yourself and diversify your portfolio, which makes it really easy and accessible for first time investors. There's loads of index funds. If you want to invest in sustainable green companies, the UK, the US, the Asian markets, the list goes on. You can invest into specific sectors or invest into general wider funds. And because you don't need to spend that time analyzing the charts of every company, they're perfect for novice investors just like you and me. Okay, so what do I do? Not that you should follow anything that I do, but if you're interested, then I'm happy to share it. I invest in various different funds and platforms as well. Now, firstly, I use Vanguard a little bit, investing in their VUSA fund and the US index equity fund, and they're kind of somewhat the same. But over the past 10 months, that has been as high as 8%, and currently it sits at 4.4%, which isn't bad for just under a year. I don't personally invest in their live strategy funds, but they are very popular, and they have some super simple beginner-friendly funds where you can choose your appetite between investing in higher risk stocks versus more stable bonds, which go up in percentage from a 20% stock, 80% bond ratio, and it's kind of like a sliding scale that moves up. I also invest into Fidelity funds, including one of my favorite, which is the Technology Global Fund, which has been an absolute champion over the past few years, with some specific years gaining almost 40%, which is just ridiculous. And it helped pay for the renovations on the buy to let as well as loads of other things. I've also got some money in the Bailey Gifford Fund and the Gamut Star Disruptive Fund that have been hammered this year at minus 40% since putting the money in. So take that as a lesson to make sure that you really diversify your money and use different funds or stick to something more mainstream like the S&P 500. Minus 40% is fine for me. That would be hugely worrying to some people, but luckily I only put a few thousand pounds into those specific funds and that money will just need to stay there for a few years until it goes back into profit. The main advice here is that if you do invest, always remember that your capital is at risk and that you should be prepared to leave your money in for a minimum of three to five years to allow for those ups and downs in the market. So choosing a platform and the prices associated with it. So how do you open a stocks and shares ISA and invest into funds like the S&P 500? Well, these days it's becoming really simple. Ages ago, you'd have to find a stockbroker call them up to invest your money. And these days you can literally go onto platforms like Vanguard, Fidelity, Invest Engine, and more. And these are huge, well-known and trusted regulated platforms to open up your official stocks and shares ISA. The platform is effectively the company that holds your money. And then with each platform, they allow you to invest into different funds. Now, Vanguard have a limited amount of their own funds in the UK, but they charge really small fees. Fidelity, on the other hand, is a proper global platform that has access to thousands of funds and therefore they charge you a higher platform fee. They also do include the Vanguard funds on Fidelity, but of course you're paying the slightly higher platform fees to get access to the same funds. You basically pay two types of fees, the platform fee and a fund fee. Now usually this is all percentage based depending on how much money you put in. On Fidelity, you pay a service fee on the platform, which is 0.35% at the moment. If you invest in standard funds, you don't pay any dealing fees to buy or sell. So on their online calculator, if you invested 20K into a stocks and shares ISA, you'd pay about 90 pounds in fees a year. It sounds expensive, but if you got the average 7% return on those funds, that would be about 1,400 pounds of profit. So not bad. Or if you had been lucky a few years ago and got the 40% returns in the global technology fund, that would have been about £8,000 of tax-free profit. Vanguard charges a bit less at 0.15%. I also have some profits from the business invested into InvestEngine. They don't actually charge a platform fee right now, so they're technically the cheapest, but that could change in the future. But for me, it's a good way to keep my business profits invested without paying any fees. And I actually invest into the Vanguard funds through InvestEngine and just pay the 0.07% for the actual fund itself. So if you 
predominantly invest into Vanguard, exploring it through Invest Engine might be a slightly cheaper idea. You then also pay the fund fee as well. So once you've chosen a platform to use, then you start looking for funds to pay your money into. For example, the Global Technology Fund, which is what I've invested in previously, and has a fund fee of 1.31%, which again does sound expensive on £20,000. This would be about £262 a year. So if you add that up, plus the £90 platform fee, it would cost about £352 a year to use Fidelity with that specific fund. But if you had put 20k into that fund at the start of 2018 and left it in for just three years until the end of 2021, your money would have gone up 104.87%, meaning you'd have over £40,000 in your stocks and shares ISA, more than double what you started with, and you would have only paid about £1,000 in fees over those three years. On Vanguard, their example is that if you invested 20k into their 60% life strategy fund, which is 60% stocks and 40% bonds, it would actually cost about £82 a year to invest with them as their fees are lower, but also their funds are more limited and lower performing. In the same time period, your money would have gone up 19%, so you'd have just under £4,000 in profit minus £246 in fees. Now, technically Vanguard isn't a platform because they have access only to their own funds, but they're still fully regulated and act as if they were a real platform. You shouldn't use past performance as an indicator of future performance. A fund could do really well for years, but then tank for years, so good history doesn't necessarily mean it will continue that way. Especially in higher risk funds, we could have years of growth, a bit like the property market, and then have a long period of stagnant or negative growth, so there's always some kind of risk involved. That's why you should always invest your money with the intention to keep it in there for a minimum of three to five years to weather any storms. All right, so we've explored the popular platforms to open a stocks and shares ISA and what an index fund is. What are the pros and cons of this type of investing? Well, some of the pros. Firstly, it's easy to manage. You don't have to spend every day analyzing graphs, pretending to know what all the stock market terminology means. You can literally invest your money into a country's top 100 or 500 companies that are huge, international, well-known, trusted brands. I literally put my money into my stocks and shares ISA and pretty much leave it in there. I do check up on the performance and see how things are doing, but if funds go down, for me, I just leave them in. I'm not day trading, so it's really about holding on for the long term. Secondly is a chance to beat inflation. Inflation has recently been as high as 11% to 12%, which is huge. And that means if you have £100 in your bank account right now, it's worth 11% less today than what it was a year ago. You still have £100, but that money has 11% less buying power compared to the cost of food, petrol and other items. So the idea is that you should always try to beat inflation to make sure your money is increasing in real terms, not decreasing. Stocks give you a good chance of beating it, especially when the inflation rate is low and the Bank of England have a 2% target. So if inflation is 2% and you're gaining the average 7%, in real terms, your money is worth 5% more. This is how you ensure over a long period of time of investing that you build your wealth and relative to the economy out there, you're still building your wealth, not just keeping up with the rising cost of living. And thirdly, it's easy to diversify. The key advice with investing is to diversify. So you shouldn't put all your money onto a single stock or company unless you're an incredibly experienced investor and you do spend your day looking at graphs and charts. Index funds quickly and easily spread out your money. If you invested £100 in a stocks and shares ISA, that money would be spread out so you're investing literally pennies into each company, spread across hundreds of companies, and together the idea is that they give you a decent return in total and you can literally do it with one click, as opposed to having to individually invest in 500 separate companies, which would be incredibly time consuming. And that is the same for selling as well. You can sell your position in one click rather than having to do it 500 times. And some of the cons of investing into index funds and using a stocks and shares ISA. Firstly is the idea that money can go down. As with any investing, although index funds are great for beginners, 
you still have to be comfortable with the idea that your money could go down because with any type of investing, risk is involved. And some people just aren't comfortable with that. Despite the benefits and the popularity of investing, it does worry some people and that's okay. In that scenario, stick to a cash ISA, especially at the moment, that pays less interest, but is good with the current Bank of England bank rate. Secondly is that you'll need to lock your funds away for three to five years, or at least be prepared to. Yes, you could get lucky and invest your money into a fund and get 40% returns in a single year and then take it back out again. But when you invest your money, you really can't predict the future, so you really have to invest for the long term. If you need your money in an emergency or need it within a short amount of time, then you shouldn't invest it because if it does go down, like some of my funds which have dropped 40% after investing, I now can't really touch that until it goes up unless I want to sell my position at a loss. In conclusion, I believe that stocks and shares ISAs are hugely underrated. They're a great way to build wealth and the reality is this is why the rich get richer is because they invest in their assets which gain value over time. Right now, easy access savings accounts have okay rates, but as the Bank of England rate comes down, it'll mean savings rates go down with it, making it harder to grow your money above inflation and thus loses its value over time, which is why £100 today and the value of that is a lot less than it was 40 years ago. One of the best bits of index fund investing is that you can start with very little. You can literally put £100 into a stocks and shares ISA and let it sit there if that's all you want to invest. But you don't need tons of money or wealth and you don't need tons of experience. Investing these days is far, far easier, cheaper and more accessible than it used to be. And it's why I store most of my wealth this way. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this one here, which explores the top iPhone finance apps that I love using. Click here and check out this video.